Another really important part of Model 2.0 is the ability to manage these imported objects. Now, I want to preface this by making you understand that when you import these objects and they have high polygon counts, which means that those objects I just brought in, that um, simple uh, uh, color cabinet, had all that, that those polygons for that sink and the polygons for the tap. That's a lot of information. And so these objects, they can be really high polygon counts for that. And so you need to be able to manage that. Otherwise, it, it will decrease the performance of your project. So one of the things that we did was we um, implemented a polygon reduction tool within uh, model port. And this allows us to basically change that polygon count from say 106,000 polygons to a smaller polygon count. So this is actually a chair. It's all it is is a chair. Um, and this chair has 106,314 polygons and that's one chair. So just to kind of keep that in context, I mean, RFECAD objects shouldn't have more than a couple hundred polygons, you know, um, and ideally no more than maybe 10 or 20,000, maybe 30,000 polygons at the most. So to have 106,000 polygons is enormous. So what we've done is we've added now a polygon reduction tool to model port. The way it works, you select the object and you open up model port. And then you go to um, the, uh, uh, to select the object, uh, at the top here, this little square right here, which is basically selecting the um, information about that object. And so by doing that, a little bit here, okay. By doing that, I can then select my polygon reduction tool. So right down here at the bottom, you'll see is poly reduction. And when I select poly reduction, I can uh, basically what's called decimate. I can actually reduce the decimation steps. And I can also see visually here, that whether it's been reduced or not. So in other words, by showing it green, uh, showing it that it's actually okay. If I take it up to say a three, okay, it's gonna show even more reduction down to 25.59. When it was actually showing red, that meant that it was actually uh, a really high polygon count. Now, when I reduce this, it's actually gonna now be reduced. And if I update my model, Here's what's really nice. You'll see that it actually hasn't changed my graphic too much, a little bit there, not too bad, uh, but it's reduced it significantly. If I look at it in 3D, even more so, is that you cannot tell the difference between the 2D, I'm doing the one that was 106,000 polygons versus the one that was now 20,000 polygons. They're pretty similar. And this is what's really, really important because for Many of you who have imported objects that have high polygon counts, you probably know that these high polygon counts um, you know, create a lot of issues and for your performance, particularly the more objects that you add. So being able to control these polygon counts now is a really important step to making these objects more useful for you and your projects. Now, another thing we did was to, to be able to allow you to control the file size of objects. So we've added in a new format in Model 4 called a Model 4 format. And you'll see that when you go to your save mode here, um, that you can now select the save mode to be in Model Port, GDL, or GDL and Model Port. Now, Model Port is our new format that I'll talk about in a second. Uh, GDL is, stands for Geometric Description Language. That is actually what, it, what Graphisoft's um, objects are typically based on. And then you can combine these two as well. So you have these three options. Now, the reason why the model port format is important is that we've actually been able to reduce up to eight times the file size of these objects. So you'll see right now that object's 13 megabytes, okay? If I change this to the model port format and I update that object, It's, and I go back up to my menu, take a look at this in the library manager. We're gonna see now that it reduced from 13 megabytes down to 2.1 megabytes. That is a huge reduction in the size of that object. So that's critical. I mean, if you think about the fact that you're importing in potentially you know, dozens of objects, maybe hundreds of objects into your project, and if those objects are you know, 10, 20 megabytes, and all of a sudden you can reduce them by up to eight times smaller, 
That is very important. Um, the model port format also allows you to re-edit the object. So if they're a GDL format, you can bring it in and import it. But if you want to re-edit it, meaning the change the materials directly in the model port editor, doing things like that that I was showing you a minute ago, you need to be, it needs to be in the model port format. That allows you to re-edit the object after it's been imported. And it also maintains that file reduction on computers without the model port license. So if you have model port, uh, if you want to use model port on multiple computers, um, and maybe you have 10 computers and you have model port installed on five of the computers where they're licensed, you can still um, be able to benefit, benefit from that reduction of file size by simply having model port installed on your other computers uh, even if it's not licensed, as long as it's installed there, uh, it will actually maintain um, that reduction in the file size. Now, the GDL format is just your standard format, right? If I go in and I select the GDL option right here, it's going to allow me to import an object, and, and it's going to work just like any typical GDL format would work. Uh, it's not going to reduce the file size, so it will be a lot larger. And it's not going to store that extra model port information if I want to re-edit that object after I've imported it. So, you know, that is the disadvantage of it. But it is available there for those of you who might need it. Uh, we have made that available for that. And if you want to combine the two, uh, the GDL and the model port format, so uh, that you don't have to worry about having model port installed on other computers that, where it's not licensed, then you can... Um, choose the GDL and the model port format. The reason why that's nice is it will not um, reduce the file size of the object, so it does create the larger file size. However, what it does allow you to do is to re-edit those objects on other computers, so that uh, even if it, it's um, uh, even if it's not in the uh, model port format, so uh, because it, I'm sorry, it is both GDL and the model port format, so it just gives you more flexibility for that without having to worry about that. And if you are on other computers without Archicad, without model port installed on Archicad, then it will allow you to be able to uh, view those objects and, and to be able to access those objects on those other computers without installing model port. So it's the most flexible in that you can send your model to somebody else, you have to worry about them having model port on their computers, uh, et cetera. It just, it's a more flexible format if you need that as well. So we've given you those three options. With model port, of course, being the most efficient, and the GDL plus model port being the most uh, uh, open format, if you will, being able to use it anywhere you want. Now, we've also, uh, uh, with this new version, we have implemented something called the model port browser. Now, this is a really great new uh, opportunity for you guys to be able to manage uh, objects that you've imported to Archicad in terms of being able to. Um, uh, visually navigate and find these objects. So one of the biggest problems you, that people have is they go out and they download a bunch of objects from various sources. And oftentimes they put them in folders and they maybe they, they downloaded them last week or last month or a year ago and they're going to look at them and they don't know what they look like. And so they don't really want to have to go in and, and import every one of those in there to be able to figure out what they are. So with the model port um, browser now, you can basically visually navigate through folders to see objects that you've downloaded from various sources. So if you bring it to browser, I can see it, I can dock it so that I can actually have it to the side here and I can scroll through uh, you know, various objects that I have. Uh, I can also go to different folders with different objects in it and being able to navigate through um, various sources here. So this is a really nice way for you to be able to uh, kind of quickly be able to be able to find objects visually. It's also drag and drop. So if I just want to drag and drop a object from, uh, you know, uh, the browser, I can do that. I'll just double click it and open it up and be able to edit it and then place it in my project. So again, it's a really quick way for you to be able to uh, manage objects in terms of visually navigating and quickly finding them and then dragging and dropping them into your project. Okay, hopefully that's given you guys a good overview of some of the resources out there, of uh, how, um, you know, the differences between the built-in 
of uh, uh, importer in ARCHICAD versus the model port add-on importer and how those two differ and the pros and cons of both. I'm now going to talk a little bit about just if you are interested in demoing model port, getting started with model port, uh, using this in your workflow, how you can start with that. So if you go to archvista.com slash model port, uh, you can download a trial from there. Just navigate on the right hand side and you'll see the download trial option there. And you can then download a trial of, our, of, of model port and start to use that. The difference between the trial and the licensed version is the trial will have a watermark on it. And that watermark will be there until you, uh, you know, purchase a, a copy and then um, like, um, change it from a, a demo to a licensed copy.